Math 2414, improper integrals, discontinuous integrands, example two. Oh no, trig. Let's integrate secant of x dx from zero to power over two. Now, before we integrate this, you need to make sure you understand why this is an improper integral. And in order to do that, you need to remember what the graph of the secant looks like. Now, a lot of people don't remember what the graph of the secant looks like, but here's how you can rediscover it. You just remember that secant of x is the reciprocal of cosine, and you get the graph of cosine. Now, you do have to know what the graph of cosine looks like. It starts at 1, bottoms out at negative 1, and in increments of power over 2, it oscillates between, so here's power over 2, uh, pi, 3 power over 2, 2 pi, then go backwards a little bit, negative power over 2, negative pi. But cosine starts high and then goes high, middle, low, middle, high, and then it just reverses back here. But how do you get the graph of secant? By looking at the graph of cosine and realizing that you're reciprocating it. Now, what's the one number you can't reciprocate? Zero. So wherever cosine is zero, secant has an asymptote. Asymptote there, asymptote here, asymptote here, and there's an infinite number of them. Now, one and negative one are their own reciprocals. So anywhere this peaks or valleys is going to be a point on the graph of secant. When I tell students when I teach trigonometry, the gimmick for remembering the graph of secant is to draw the graph of cosine, drop asymptotes at its x-intercepts, and reciprocate the rest of the branches. Literally turn them upside down on their peaks and valleys. So this quote-unquote reciprocates into that. This piece quote-unquote reciprocates into this branch and it looks like a parabola except it's not because parabolas aren't bound by asymptotes. And if we reciprocate this guy, it looks like that. Same thing right here. And again, we flip them at one and negative one because the reciprocal of one is one, reciprocal of negative one is negative one. So here's the graph of secant, and more importantly, we're integrating it from 0 to the power over 2. So we're integrating it over this integral. 0 is not the problem, but power over 2 is. We're basically being asked, what is this area? Does it converge? And if it does, what, it converge, what does it converge to? So power over 2 is the, is the culprit here. He's the guy that is making secant. This is a discontinuity. So let's tack it. We'll do the first part over here because it won't take too much time. First, we're going to replace the discontinuity with t. We're going to integrate secant of x dx. But that's an integral that you, I want you to have memorized if you don't already. And if you don't, go back and remember it. It's the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent of x from 0 to t. We'll put in the t, that won't be a problem. Let's just talk about the zero. Secant of zero is one. Tangent of zero is zero. So when I put in zero, I get one plus zero, which is one. I get the natural log of one, which is zero. So substitute this minus substitute that, but this is zero. So we just get natural log absolute value of secant of t plus tangent of t. So there's the uh, first move of the improper integral process. Our second move is to take the limit as t approaches, not infinity, as t approaches this guy, but he'll be approaching power over 2 from the left. Uh, and again, that's because we are in this interval from 0 to power over 2, and we want the t to be in that interval, and it has to approach the power over 2 from the left side. The limit as t approaches power over 2 from the left of that guy natural log absolute value secant x plus tangent x. So we have to ask ourselves what happens as we get closer to power over 2. Now we got to answer that not just for secant but for tangent, so let's just whip out a graph of tangent real quick. Uh, without reinventing everything, tangent has vertical asymptotes of power over 2 and negative power over 2. And the branch in the middle starts low it's the origin and it goes high. It's the mirror image of the graph of arc tangent across a diagonal line. So let's talk about what these limits are. As we approach power 2 from the left of secant, 
Here's the graph of secant, here's pi over two. As we approach it from the left, this graph goes up to infinity. Uh, this spells trouble. Well, this, what this spells is divergence. But let's check out the tangent. Same thing. As we approach pi over two from the left on the graph of tangent, here's pi over two approach it from the left, we're going up to infinity. And we already know that the limit of uh, natural log as you approach infinity is infinity. So this is infinity, therefore the integral diverges. I know it was a lot of work to say diverges, but that's how the game's played. And on this one, I want you to really focus on the fact that we use the graphs of the functions to help answer these limits. That is not an uncommon move. So if you're doing a limit and you don't know what it is, look at a basic graph and see if that can help you.